oh gosh, he got me, he got me. <laughs> Let me try to do this here. Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. We're back. Yes, thanks guys for being with us. <clears throat> Yesterday we uh, we spent like three three or more hours putting together a big video and we were about 50 minutes or so into the video with probably 20 more minutes to go. And uh, they just corrupted the video and we couldn't even salvage any of it. So we're going to break it up into a couple different videos and add a little more elements to it. Uh, because, you know, there's some news today that fits kind of right in. And, you know, here we go. We're looking at an artist concept of Atlantis there. Oh, well, we're still living Atlantis, so to speak. You know, we, we are watching history repeat itself time and time again. And here we go again. You know, for those that listen day in, uh, day in, week in, week out, year in, year out, you've probably heard me say before that, you know, right now we've gone through a period where we're getting this stick. You remember that old, you know, saying, I guess it's used in reference to training animals where, you know, you give them the stick and then you give them the carrot and then you give them the stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. You know, you, you trade off. <clears throat> well, now they're going to dangle carrots. And I think we'll go back and forth between carrots and sticks for, you know, the, the indefinite future. Mm -hmm. Most likely. So what are we talking about? Well, think about Atlantis. And so what we've gotten <clears throat> when we look at timelines and we look at past civilizations, of which there, there probably have been countless ones, uh, literally. You know, the Hopis speak about the fifth world, but what we've gotten from the guides is kind of like when we talk in those terms, it's almost like they're shaking their heads in a, in a sense of like... Uh, you guys don't get it. It's not like five times. It's more than five dozen times that we've gone through this cycle. It could be, and and we've actually gotten that it seems like it's hundreds, if not thousands of times that we've gone through these cycles. And these cycles are, again, they're much more rapid than we think. You know, if they are putting it out there and acknowledging certain things, like maybe the reality of a 12,000 year mega, mega disaster, then maybe we don't have that exactly right. Maybe that is the truth. And, you know, if you look at the comments, it seems like most people watching this channel accept that every 12,000 years there's a huge disaster. But what if there's like in between, maybe every 200 to 400 years? What if there's many ones that are actually doing more accumulative damage than the big one does? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I mean, we we posed this question some time ago when we were living back in New Mexico. And the information that came up from the guides is, you know, roughly 400 years, maybe 500 years, something really significant goes on so they can stop adjust reset allow everything to move forward in a way where they get to keep control for the maximum for the maximum amount of time possible so when we look at atlantis really again it wasn't just that it was in one spot it was um a culture that existed think of it in terms of a culture that existed but also existed globally and just like right now, well, until perhaps maybe another few years, that's already part of a shift where if you guys are familiar with uh, any sort of heavy rock music, Rammstein, we're all living in America. You saw how America got everywhere. You know, you could find McDonald's and things that are quote unquote America in Russia, in China, in Africa, in, in Southeast Asia, in South America, in Australia, in New Zealand, all over the place, right? American culture everywhere. The, you know, that whole society, the whole economic system, the whole, yeah, there's different variances uh, of things. Really, when as, as we spoke before, too, when you go to China, what do you find? Do you find traditional Chinese medicine everywhere or do you find Western medicine? The culture that we're talking about is, is Atlantis. It's an Atlantean culture. 
it's something that was globally dominant and then it you know basically was no more it was wiped out it was a huge disaster as you see you know this uh interesting little depiction it looks like a little sunshine almost looks like a merkaba sitting here it looks almost like a star of david here in the middle a dome it looks like there might be an energy dome up there for some sort of protection or something isn't it curious isn't it curious and then this one's kind of interesting with lightning plasma coming from the ether and around a pyramid structure and then this one we have a depiction of a mushroom cloud going off with you know greco-roman uh architecture well greco-roman architecture that's still left over atlantean architecture and of course there's so much that's under the ocean right now <clears throat> that we've been discovering all along from the bimini road uh to a city off the west coast of india that's you know exactly where we hear it being told it's going to be in in the ramayana for instance verification of the past now think about this okay everything is carbon-based emissions carbon-based emissions climate change right all of a sudden out of the blue you know it's it's the main thing at a time when you know food is in short supply inflation's going through the roof though you know gas is going down 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 at the moment way down i mean i saw it at 260 i think last time i was out and then you have the wef calling for an end to private car ownership no more private cars for you no 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 or for us or for anybody you know the, we're going to a different stage we're going to a different stage so now we see the u.s to announce a fusion energy breakthrough whoa this feels huge it really feels huge department of energy plans to announce tuesday that scientists have been able for the first time to produce a fusion reaction that creates a net energy gain a major milestone in the decades-long multi multi-billion dollar quest to develop a technology that provides unlimited cheap clean power the aim of fusion research is to replicate the nuclear reaction which energy is created on the sun it's the holy grail of carbon-free power that scientists have been chasing since the 50s. It's still at least a decade, maybe decades away from commercial use, but the latest development is likely to be touted by the 46th administration as an affirmation of a massive investment by the government over the years. Huge amounts of public and private funds have been funneled into the fusion race worldwide with the aim of ultimately manufacturing fusion machinery that could bring electricity to the grid with no carbon footprint, no radioactive waste, and far fewer resources than it takes to harness solar and wind. Beyond the climate benefits, promoters say it could help bring cheap electricity to impoverished parts of the world. To most of us, this was only a matter of time, said a senior fusion scientist familiar with the work of the National Ignition Facility at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California, where the discovery was made. Development was first reported by Financial Times on Sunday, was confirmed by two people familiar with research who spoke on the condition of anonymity to avoid getting ahead of the official announcement. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm was slated to make the announcement Tuesday at a media event billed as the unveiling of a major scientific breakthrough. And so here you see from, from uh, Zero Hedge talking about it and gets into uh, fusion energy, sustainable, ample resources, clean, scalable, safety advantages, reliable. You know, there's a little excerpt from MIT. Um, basically, think about it as creating uh, the energy of the stars right here on Earth. Yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting. Oof. It's, it's hot energy, all right. For scientists, making fusion energy means recreating the conditions of stars, starting with plasma. Plasma is the fourth state of matter after solids, liquids, and gases. Ice is an example of a solid. When heated up, it becomes a liquid. Place the liquid in a pot on the stove and becomes a steam. If you take the gas, continue to make it hotter, about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
6,000 Kelvin, it will change from a gas to the next phase of matter, plasma. 99% of the mass of the universe is in the plasma state, since almost the entire mass of the universe is in, in super-hot stars that exist as plasma. To make fusion energy, scientists must first build a steel chamber, create a vacuum like in outer space. The next step is to add hydrogen gas. The gas particles are charged to produce an electric current, then surrounded and contained within an electromagnetic force. The hydrogen is now a plasma. The plasma is then heated up to about 100 million degrees, and fusion energy is released. That's all. I don't know. I'm just sitting here rolling my eyes with all of this wonderful, glorious science that they're throwing at us. And I'm sure they just have everything completely nailed like, oh, a vacuum, just like in outer space. Yeah, yeah. I mean, boy, they know what they're talking about. It's not like they're going to revise that in six months, you know, a year, a million times like they have. But a few interesting things came up when when we looked at this this morning. And the first word that came up was Atlantis. And that that kind of concerned me. And I'm still getting chills over that. You know, your spidey senses pick up and whatnot. Then the other thing that came through is of the heart chakra, solar plexus, a certain giddy excitement came came over. And with the understanding that, yes, this is a huge announcement. This is an announcement that many have been waiting for. And when I say many, I don't mean humans many entities that have been parked around our globe watching things unfold this is what they've been waiting for so this seems like we're at a crossroads now and where serious decisions need to be made and this is where the separation of energies can can start to happen but it just feels like such a serious time um and such an awakening is going to come over also they're needing to announce these different um, technologies because we are going to start seeing ships in the sky and it's not going to be explainable so they need to roll something out you know of course there's also other agendas but that's what came in otherworldly absolutely and again recognize they they still have their agenda so you know there there's a lot going on behind the scenes we are not privy to every single little treaty there have been treaties there's treaties that are expiring in 2025 this is why and, and when we say treaties that are expiring we mean treaties of a galactic nature that are expiring the real reasons why these dates why they do things by certain dates because you know, again, it's, it's related to a much bigger picture. Earth is not the center of the universe. It's the center of our universe because this is where we are. But it's not the center of the universe. It's not the center of this battle that's ongoing. It's just one tiny little outpost. It's just one tiny little world amongst countless worlds. So when we see, we need to look at everything that's going on. And we were talking about these incubators. And how you know again you're seeing infertility you're seeing sperm count decline uh we've been watching uh life expectancy decline for several years in a row right now and we see miscarriages through the roof and we see these incubators and we understand all you need is dna all you need is dna and and that's it you know you can start to create uh, life, you know, given the right circumstances and, and given samples, <laughs> you know, truly, truly, there's a bigger picture here. We've talked about the whole thing before with Tartaria. So Atlantis, you could think of Atlantis as a civilization that was of, of a mix, mixed nature as it perhaps started in a higher age and then deterior, deteriorated along with the deterioration of the age towards the Kali Yuga. Kind of exploded, imploded on itself uh, technologically and also through the infiltration of the dark energies, the dark beings that, that started to take over control of minds and hearts. Again, what do we see in the Anunnaki legends? 
what do we see? Now, again, they did not create human souls. No. And, and you know, again, the soul is only human when it's in a human body. It's having a human experience. They didn't create souls. They, they, they are not the source of all things. They're not even the creators of this universe. They alter things. Absolutely. They, they are geneticists. They are, in so many ways, mad scientists when we, when we look at it. And they utilize people as a resource. Uh, and when we look to the legends where it says uh, Enlil was getting tired of hearing all the noise from Earth because there's too many humans, and then whoosh, they get wiped out. You know, some get saved, and they do it all over again. That is, <laughs> that's the formula. That's the formula. You get to a population threshold. You get to a knowledge threshold. You get to a certain point of realization, and then whoosh, it's wiped out. They do it all over again. And as I'm going to watch carefully, making sure we're not getting into that same same situation where somebody's going to remotely try to turn the plug off on the video because they don't want this getting out. This happens all the time. They always pull the plug right before we get to a point of realization. They have to. And then what do they do? They genetically modify the vehicles that the souls are going in. The vehicles that the souls go in are constantly getting stripped of abilities. They are downgrades. Homo sapiens is not an upgraded version of the previous version. No, it's a downgraded version. And then the version that they're going to put out, roll out next which is already in process with everything that's going on on the planet. And the guys are all, the dogs, sorry, guys are rambunctious. Um, you know, the, what's, what's in unfolding before our eyes right now is a downgraded version. Meanwhile, humanity is naturally getting an upgraded version. So herein lies the problem. If they do not interfere Humanity is going to be upgraded to the point of no longer being able to be utilized by the controllers. So what they're going to do is, again, they are going to do their modifications. They understand that if they keep you in a low vibrational frequency through the use of techniques like constant warfare, amongst other things, anger, fear, anxiety, all these emotions that keep us in a very, very low frequency, they will keep you in their home turf in the lower fourth density. So when you pass on and you leave the body, and many people pass on in mass like is happening right now, if they are clouded by certain things that they've chosen to do, if they are dying in fear, anxiety, like say the war that is to come, the civil unrest, the likelihood is they're going to reincarnate in the same sort of uh, frequency range that they left the world in, and they'll be right back in the matrix of the controllers. This is exactly what they're banking on. Now they're also going to dangle carrots and tempt you with their technology because they, they'll, they'll let it know. We have the technology. You don't have to, you know, die at 70. No, no, no. You could live to be 300. You could live to be 400. Yeah, you know, this is what they're going to reel out. We could age regress you. We could age regress you. you. Your body's old and achy. Your joints are hurting. How would you like to peel 30 years off? This, these are the carrots that, that will be dangled next. And many, many, many will, will jump right on board. I mm have... -hmm. <clears throat> Allowing yourself to become, to remain organic is the most important thing right now. We don't need technologies to regress our age. Those technologies from Earth already exist and they are here. It's just simply a matter of discovery and we're not that far away from an organic discovery of age regression and completely healing ourselves but we know what the controllers do they always copy mother nature with a technology so they take m mother's technology and they just recreate their own technology so that they have control over whatever is going on 
we we have decisions and choices to make and it is very important we always talk about healing your own soul healing healing your ancestral lineage if there's been a lot of abuse it's time that you take the time to step back and heal that lineage because you're not just healing for yourself you're healing for those who come who come for your great 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 grandchildren grandchildren and you're healing the ancestral line as well your job is very very important so solely focusing on you healing your emotions is really going to take that family line a, a, a very long way and help evolution natural evolution occur and ascension occur for you and your family you know even your friends that you're close to it's like we come together in these groups and we incarnate once again and again so their favorite thing to do is yes put a lot of fear out there create a lot of angst to make sure people stay in that low vibration and that way they get to keep that source energy for themselves so you know we've touched on this before the fact that babies being born in cabbage patches and and storks air mailing babies to new parents. I mean, this is just weird stuff based on our our legends and all of these, you know, myths. <laughs> but they're usually a kernel of truth. I mean, when we see the babies being born in the Cabbage Patch, again, you know, we remember Cabbage Patch dolls and you would adopt them and you could fill out paperwork and stuff. You could ask for a certain, you know, dolly, et cetera, et cetera based on uh, legends that we European legends and myths but where did it come from and and how about you know babies being delivered by the historical well, how about babies being delivered by the US post office and here you see a tweet well if you couldn't get to the local child asylum or baby incubator exhibit yes baby incubator exhibits back in the 1890s hmm interesting is it not Oh, our history is is just full of conundrums. Uh, yeah, you could still you could have them mailed to you, as you see. This 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 was a thing. This wasn't a joke. This was a thing. And then uh, Cindy in the previous one said, "Oh, it must be some truth to, uh, with the kid looking like the mailman." Indeed, you know that old joke. You know, so and so looks like the mailman. Well, gosh, with every one of these legends, some truth behind it. No. Yeah, and again, we see, I mean, they're unveiling it in front of us. Now, maybe because Cindy and I are always pouring through these things, and we're always going into meditation every day. And yesterday, you know, uh, after putting three to four hours into that one video, of which, you know, the typical video, again, you know, I saw one of our, uh, I guess, disgruntled family members, you know, made a comment about, oh, sure, you're not in it for the money. Yeah, the average video, we get paid about 5 to $7 for the average video, 5 to $7 in ad revenue. That's on EE Arts because every video that we put up on Evolutionary doesn't make any revenue, none, zero. So again, you know, take $5, divide it by four hours, that's $1.25 an hour. And if you figure the two of us, you know, we're, we're making like 60 cents an hour each. No, this is a labor of love. This is why we put ourselves into, you know, one of the, uh, well, you know, we're in one of the poorest areas in, in the country on purpose because we could live uh, inexpensively here and do our job because we're only here because we're here to do this work. This is why we're here, because we, well, I guess we like to to be uh, rabble rousers. We like to be systems busters. We like to expose that which needs to be exposed. And so, you know, this is what we've gotten. This is, we've done five of these cycles before. So this is our sixth cycle uh, going through, you know, one of these Kali Yugas and, and trying to be, exposing everything mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know everyone has a personal story as to why they want the truth to be uncovered and <laughs> just to why the poor single parent just just to to share a little bit my personal story why i want the truth out there is because if i would have known the truth when i was younger about different alternative healing methods 
things in my life would be so, so different. And those that I dearly love in my life um, might actually be alive. And I used the system and the people in it because I trusted them if I just do these things and if I did it perfectly and if I did exactly what they said, my, my dear friend would be alive. So if I can bring out just a little bit of truth for someone to help themselves look around for alternative healing methods because, you know, the doctors, they can do some things, but they don't know everything and they only know what they're told. Please remember that they only know what they're told. There's so many different healing modalities out there. So it is very personal for me why I want the truth out there because it can save lives. Well, thanks for sharing that, sweetie. And uh, yeah, Cindy's talking about her best friend that, that she, at that point in time, trusted in the system and what the doctors were saying. And of course, it didn't work out. And, and her best friend was lost to us at an extremely young age. And, you know, we I've realized things, too, from all the deep meditation and then putting things together that I wouldn't have put together before. Uh, and understanding, like, you know, my brother, for instance, who was five and diagnosed with a brain tumor. And my mother trusted in the system, trusted in the doctors, went along with what they said. And he left this world at 16. And, you know, I now realize he was a victim of the system. And totally, you know, that, that's one of those things where it's, it's, a, it's awakening that comes uh, in stages. When you start to realize that, again, you know, blind trust, well, it leads us off cliffs. And, and that's just the reality of it. And w these people might start out with the right intention and, and all, but then they get caught up in, well, they get caught up in the system. And, and the system is not gentle. The system is not kind. And the system doesn't care about any of us. Its system cares about itself. This, you see, 1854 and 1929 orphan train. There is a whole bunch of evidence all about these orphan trains. And, and, and where did all these orphans come from? Well, you know, again, 1854, that's before the Civil War. Again, they use war. War is, is a tool. And I don't want to go too long. To, uh, there's so much to cover in here. War is a tool, and there's been nonstop warfare. Think about it again. The Civil War, for the, if we want to just look at the United States, that was a massive period of death and destruction. Do you know how many soldiers were left on these battlefields? Do you know how many ghosts still walk these battlefields, still confused, still don't understand what went on? That's an aspect of, of the higher self that's kind of stuck and is repeating something and is not able to fully go through the period of kind of deprogramming from, from a life. And this is exactly what they bank on. This is why there's so many battlefields everywhere strewn with the fallen, because it keeps them in the loop. It keeps them in that lower, uh, lower reality where they don't have time or the ability to fully process and to reintegrate and to move on. This is all part of the bigger picture. So we, we, we don't have an absolute clear picture of why were there so many orphans? Where did they come from? And, and again, if we look to, uh, as I've been studying Russia uh, during the, pa the time of my past, life, my last life before this one, which again is was a period of a long-term uh, civil unrest leading to revolution. And all the while, there was a world war going on later on in that same time period. That's an awful lot of death and destruction. That's an awful lot of souls losing their bodies and not being able to fully integrate, fully process and reintegrate with the higher self and instead end up getting stuck in this loop where they can be recycled again. 
it's a recycle loop and and this is what we see with these these structures buried under the ground the buildings built built on top of themselves now some as like the case for this we will have a historical explanation for and we're going to touch on that in in the next video or it might be two videos from now but we will be stringing them together but this is a global phenomenon this is a global phenomenon we find this everywhere we do have some explanations we we do have some uh, occurrences that we know of historically floods that you know took out whole towns and then new towns were built on top of them cities as well major major endeavors and then there's others that we don't have any explanation for that we don't know historically exactly how this occurred what was the context in this occurring as you see you know it's fascinating to see these old pictures of you know the past is right below our feet all the time you don't know what's below your feet again we lived in the nevada desert right on the california border in fact we drive down the street you're in california drive you know back home and you're in nevada and this area right on the border obviously had water there because we found sponges we found you know, fossilized clams. We found, um, what else did we find there? Uh, uh, sponges, clams, coral. Coral. Yeah, and we found a gigantic molar that was like four times the size of, you know, a, a typical human. And, you know, gosh, it's just fascinating. And then we found that there was legends in, of an inner earth location in Amargosa Valley. Amargosa, yes, there's an inner earth uh, entry point from what we got from neighbors and we did see tons and tons of ships every well I'd say five nights out of the week five out of seven we would see massive amounts of ships going into uh, Nellis Air Force Base you know area 51 and on the military base and you know a lot of times they were just kind of popping in out of nowhere you could see where there's nothing behind them all of a sudden they they manifest and then they go and they kind of unmanifest again amazing technologies now cindy was picking up before and this could have been what triggered this i don't know of these beings that were walking amongst these pillars giants oh yes and and some giants were brought in just to make these for others mm -hmm. right you know I, I was looking at the different beings that were walking around there during that time and it was really interesting you know I don't ever like to call anyone unattractive but they really did look like trolls I mean but they were very nice they were very kind but they were very strong they were very big and they really knew what they were doing so just like we might call the construction workers in to build our house they would call these beings in to help build these temples and the other really curious thing I found was that the different densities of beings that could be around there like I could see these beings that were I I saw them as having gold robes but they were not as dense as the beings that were actually building these temples so this was during a time where there was all kinds of entities that were able to walk the earth and see each other like a mixing in densities i think like we're fixing to go into now so that was really fun and that's a mind-blowing concept again you know seeing something that appears to be um you know the shape of some sort of body moving around obviously intelligent but looking like it's composed of light or plasma mm -hmm. absolutely you know it was really fun to feel these energies the mix of energy was so i think the word i'm looking for is accepting everyone was very accepting and there was no shock i think if we saw a light being walk in the living room with our two eyes there would be some shock and awe but no these beings could see with all three eyes all together all the time and everything was okay and that's what allowed for so many different beings to you know we have elves in the forest we have fairies that take care of the plant life we have we have different dis discarnates you know our ancestors might come visit us but most people don't know about them because they don't look with their third eye they just they only have been taught well 
the, what's in front of you is the 3D. But here, it's like everything was known. Everything was understood. And they shared their knowledge. And they shared the existence of being in that 3D world, but also of different densities. Absolutely. You know, and I, I find it interesting that a lot of people that are curious about Tartaria still... You know, they'll question everything, but then they'll still believe in the mainstream religious point of view. And, and to me, that's just mind boggling because that's such a big part of all the programming. You know, why? Why are we warned not to develop our psychic abilities? Why not to talk to the dead? Why not to do all these things, interact with other beings? Because they'll blow the paradigm and you'll know that it's all a bunch of lies and an illusion. That's why. And in these other ages, we do. I mean, we, we can interact with all these beings. And it's only in the Kali Yuga that we cannot. So again, when we look at it, the evidence of these structures, I mean, it's just overwhelming. We've gone through massive, massive disasters on this planet. And much more often than what we're told. And the warfare is extremely extensive. <clears throat> I just thought this was cute. Babor Sa, Babor Imperator Lugu, 1526 to 1858. Now, that doesn't look like it's Photoshop. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. So, are you telling me he lived, you know, 332 years? Well, if, if you look and, and you do a search on, on Wiki and, and you pull it up, you find that, no, he lived 32 years. Hmm, you know, uh, what is it? Yeah, well, again, history is constantly being revised, constantly being revised. And when we look at, well, you know, what did people in Tataria look like? Well, look at the lady on the left and look at the size of the lady on the left. We had many different giant beings uh, interacting with us. And, you know, we'll get into California and Amazons and things like that um, as well. Here we're looking at some Tartarian women represented. And we've gotten so many photos of giants in, in all different times. Uh, is, it, is it just pituitary problems or is the DNA the reason why the pituitary gland apparently has quote-unquote problems? And then, you know, these are depictions... And they're in multiple places. You can find them. There's so many interesting postcards from throughout time and pieces of art that show technologies that just don't seem congruous. Yeah, you know, what are these UFOs that are very much Vimana-like, exact replicas of Vimanas, doing with these towers in otherwise a time that looks to be maybe 1870s, 1890s? That doesn't seem to make sense, does it? What's hidden before us, you know, right before our very eyes? And when we think about things and, oh, well, it's just ornamental, beautiful domes, beautiful spires. Look at the lovely crosses, dear. Yeah, you know, do they have a purpose? Is there a purpose to this shape? And again, we have some evidence that that you know really causes us to maybe scratch our heads or maybe it's just clear and simple that we're looking at technologies we're looking at ways to harness the ether and maybe even bypass the whole fusion point of view and directly harness the ether without going through the fusion reaction stage mm -hmm. we're we're fixing to embark on something in our lives it's very very curious and you know it won't just be us watching there's going to be many other beings watching and i do i do strongly feel we are going to see them in the skies and they're going to have a little explaining to do yeah and if you look way back in here too those look like two faces looking this way don't they and they're gigantic you know, this is just fascinating stuff that we see right before our eyes. Look at these. This is, again, the exact same thing. And, and these are horse-drawn carriages, right? These roads are dirt. They look filthy. They look, I mean, it, it, look at, it looks like a mud flood happened, doesn't it? Doesn't it look kind of like, you know, maybe these were already flooded out. Maybe this was part of that flood and maybe it was in stages. 
what are these? And again, the guides might go crazy because uh, UPS guys here. You know, what are these doing? What are these things? Are they just ornamental or are they actually pulling the, you know, energy from the ether, creating free energy? And here you see this is saying these are antennas. Yes, for harnessing the ether. And there you go again. This, these are identical to those other ones. And again, we see you know, people on horseback. This, this seems very incongruous. What, what is this, 1870, 1880? Then why do they got the antennas there? Because our history is not what we've been talked about. It, it, it's not what we've been told. This is, again, about, about harnessing energy from the air. This is absolutely, it's not really religious. They use religion, again, as just another thing to cover things up. It, religion, our organized religions have been given to us as a purposeful rabbit hole that will constantly keep people, you know, arguing over dogma and dividing. Meanwhile, the Great Reset never stops. Mm -mm. No, no, it doesn't. And, you know, it's a crazy time we're living in and all I can say is really brace yourself emotionally because it's also very, very exciting. And so many of us deliberately decided to be here during this time to watch these huge evolutionary changes. What is this? This looks like some sort of sonic technology mounted on movable carts with wheels. And these are military officers. Maybe this is Japan, uh, I'm feeling. Again, you know, there's all different forms of technologies out there that are hidden. They're here. They're here. They've always been right here. They've just been hidden. Now, they're going to start to unveil some new technologies that have been here the whole time. And they might have been out in, in the open three, four hundred years ago. Totally out in the open. Yet the history that we're told isn't going to say that because the history that we're told is, is, is an illusion. Mm -hmm. it, it's true. I mean, there's so many different modalities of healing out there and different ways of doing things that's all about just using Mother Nature. So it's a time where we sh really should be exploring and learning about all of our different options because they're right there. They're just not going to put them in front of us for our for our use because they need to keep us in their construct so as always guys we look forward to your comments please share your thoughts on all this make sure you're subscribed to both channels ee arts and evolutionary we want to thank our patreons we couldn't do it without you guys we got 47 people on that first tier uh, uh, tier of one dollar a month we have 20 people on the five dollar a month and we have 19 Rainbow Warriors at $10 a month, which does help us to manufacture these videos, spend our time doing that instead of other things, which, again, it's a blessing to be able to do your purpose. And this is our purpose. It, it's to usher in a new era and to throw the veil off. We do thank you guys, too, for your support on Ko-Fi, where you could do a one-time donation or monthly. And do check out evolutionaryenergyarts.com if you need to book a session with us for energy work, Vedic astrology charts, spiritual coaching, you know, all the above. It's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com. As always, may you be blessed by the true creator of this universe. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>